Okay. You know. <laughs> we'll bump the day back a little bit. Apologize for that. I want to ask about uh, Jackson Powers Johnson. See, yeah. That'd be closing in to, uh, to get on the field. Yeah, I mean, he was on the field a couple times in the game. You didn't see him? He was really hyped up and excited. Uh, he's getting there. Listen, me and him had a good talk Saturday night, Sunday morning. He understands where I'm coming from. Uh, I think he's in a good place now physically, mentally, and emotionally. We'll see how this week goes with practice. But um, if I was a bed man, I hope to see 58 out there. Now that you've had a couple days to look at film, what does Andy Dalton bring to the table for this Sunday? Experience. The good thing about it, we got a gentleman on our staff who drafted him, knows him very well. Um, we played against Andy actually two years ago as well with New Orleans. So uh, there's some familiarity with us. Obviously, what are they going to do scheme-wise just in a couple of days? He's a vet. I'm sure there's not too much they can't throw at him and ask him to do. But I do expect him to you know, be a little bit more efficient, I don't think, on third down is what their issues were. Um, but looking at guys' experience uh, that knows how to move the ball, move the chains, and Somehow, some way, when he gets on the field, he makes plays. So we got to be savvy and smart there. A lot of times we ask you about the young guys, and you say it's just a matter of, of when it clicks. I'm, I'm sure you expected that sooner rather than later with Brock, being that he was a first-round pick. But when did you realize that he was really going to be able to have as big of an impact as he's had on this offense so far? Yeah, the day he walked in that door. I mean, we knew he was getting a, a blue chipper. I mean, it was – I mean, it just – he did it day one at Georgia when he walked on campus, and he did it each and every game, each and every year. And – he got here in rookie mini camp, and you just, you know, okay, we, you know, got pads on, and we put pads on the training camp, and it was like, all right, and we slowed him down a little bit because he was pushing himself. And to be honest, I mean, we I, we knew what we got, just didn't want to speak on it until you did it. Now it's out there, and there's no hiding it. He's a really good football player. He's tough. He loves the game. He doesn't care how he looks, how he talks. He just he just wants to play ball, and that, that, that fits our mentality. You talked a lot about you talked a lot about starting fast record wise. Crosby talks a lot about stacking wins. <clears throat> You have two straight home games. Is there an opportunity now, do you think, to bring that to fruition and make that happen? Well, we're just excited to be back home. Training camp, we're away. Preseason first game, we're away. First two home, first two games in the regular season, we're away. This is a great opportunity for us to come home in front of our family, friends, the fans, Raider Nation, the Black Hole. I mean, we're just, to be honest, we're excited. Our guys are extremely excited about this opportunity. Um, we feel like we're going to have a great showing, and we need to put up a great show. Can you back off of uh, Case's question about Brock? You see his work ethic and what he did on the field. You talked the other day about him growing, but when you're in meetings or he's in film, his IQ, was it there? Did it come? Is that still growing? Where's that at as far as what you're impressed with? Well, I think you really saw that. Go back to Minnesota, the first preseason game. He was lining the ball over the place. He was at wide receiver. He was in the slot. He was at tight end. He was on the line tight end. He was at, in the backfield at fullback, and that was early on. Now, fast forward to about a month and a half, you know, from that standpoint, and he's doing a great job just understanding now, just not – what we want to do offensively, but I think also what the defense is doing. You know, and I think as we start getting into this bad boy even more, I think he'll understand how teams are going to try to take us away, right? Every week we worry about Devontae getting cloud coverage, right? He got two over one on him. So I think it's just critical that, as, you know, with Lou Stecco and Lou Getze, they do a great job of just getting him to understand pro football and what comes with success, right? People will now look at you differently. So I think just how he handles that, but he's very, very smart individual. And obviously, like I said, he's a football player, man. It comes very easy to him, and he's natural on the grass. And obviously that got a lot done in college. Um, I, yeah, I know you guys are still putting it together offensively, but it feels like there's still room for him to be a, a huge part of this. I mean, all of them. I, I mean, listen, just the way it worked out last week, you got, you know, two players with nine-plus receptions, and they had the hot hand. I don't know who's going to be this week. You know, who, you hope each and every week somebody else steps up, right? We hope the running game, first and foremost, steps up this week. We start there. Then Jacoby, then Trey. We haven't gotten the ball to a lot of our guys, and – that starts with us on third down. We got to keep the chains moving. We can't get out on some three and outs. We can't have these negative plays on P and tens. We just got to do a better job of starting a series. And when that happens, now you can spread the ball out, right? At the end of the day, everybody's not going to walk away with 10 catches and 20 touches. Not going to happen. It might be Mike's game this week, Brock's game that week. Hell, we might run the ball 70 times. I don't know what it's going to do. Whatever it takes to win, I think our guys are, are willing to do that. And that's what's most important. When you have a guy like Gronkowski coming out and saying Bowers can be better than he was as a pass catcher, I mean, that's a lot of expectations to put on a kid. Is he the kind of kid that can, that can handle that and embrace that? Or, like, is that something you want to – I just, I just think that's a hell of a compliment, to be honest. I think we'll just leave it at that. I mean, he's got a long way to go. It's two games. You know, um, he's a good football player. And I think the best thing about Brock, he's so humble. He's just humble, right? He just – again, I don't know if you're going to get a chance to talk to him today. You can probably not, but he's not going to say much. So we're just going to play football. You mentioned the run game, and we talked about it quite a bit, getting it going. Is there going to be a heavy emphasis this week to try to do that multiple different ways? Yeah, I mean, I come up here when I say it. I'm not just talking coaching cliche. We need to run the ball. It needs to be balanced. Right now we haven't been balanced, and that's really tough 
on our offensive line. It's tough on our quarterback because guys are just teeing off. They're in three-point track stances, just running you know, laps around our guys. That's, that's not how we want to play football, nor that's how we want it to look. So I think it's really critical that we – I think first and foremost, if there's a negative play, you just got to stick with it, right? You see teams each and every time, right? You just keep pounding, pounding, pounding away, then come the fourth quarter, you break one. I look at the game like this. Look at Zamir's last three runs in the game, and hopefully that's what we look like on Sunday. I guess when I meant emphasis, I meant this week in practice as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Yes, sir. I mean, really, today's Wednesday. Today's our early down day, so we're really, you know, focused on that. But it's not about folks on it. It's what works. We need to get to, like, what works. We can have all these plays. I can just start throwing darts, too. But what works for the Raiders? What works for Zamir? What works for our offensive line? What are we doing well? Like, right, sometimes scheme, players, all that stuff. Let's get to what works well. And I think if we just pull back a little bit, less is more. It's like I normally say, uh, we can get that done. Coach, can you take us back to the excitement, not to say that not that every game is not as important as excited, but this is your home opener, head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders at the Allegiant Stadium. Mm -hmm. You're planning to play in front of your fans. How much more excitement is on this game? Yeah, you can't tell. Like, like I'm serious. Like, we're fired up. Like, we are, we're extremely excited about Sunday at 1 o'clock. I'm waiting to come out there for pregame and just watch that bad boy rock and roll. I know our players are looking forward to it again. I mean, because we look at it like this. We play two role games. We go to the, you know, the Chargers and we're in L.A. and – it was a Raider game, right? And then in the fourth quarter in Baltimore, that place got loud. It was a lot of Raider fans there. They traveled. But now we're at home. We're in our beautiful stadium. It's a great opportunity for us to do what we need to do at home, take care of business, and more importantly for our fans to show up like they've been doing wherever we've been, but now do it at our home place. Coach, one more question regarding the Max Crosby interaction with Gardner Minshew. During, pre during the training camp, you talked about how this was a player-ran team. Do you think that had a lot to do with it, and how important is for players to speak up in those crucial moments? Yeah, I mean, I can go up to Gardner and give him a you know, pep talk, too. But it's different when it comes from Max Crosby, right? It's different when it comes from a Robert Spillane. But I think, like I said, that, that is just showing the togetherness of our team. Everything that we worked on in training camp and the offseason, you know, building that bond, building that closeness with one another. Hey, I got your back, right? Bad play, bad opportunity. Okay, cool, I got you. And that's what our defense has really done a really good job of, not blinking, not flinching. And we're going to get that confidence with our offense. As you can see, we've got some really good players there. We just need to do it for four quarters. But I think it's really telling when the leaders of our team just step up like that on their own, grab a quarterback, which you don't see much, a defensive player interact with a quarterback after a negative play and have that kind of response. Did you ever have to do that with Eli? A couple times. He threw six picks in one game against uh, Minnesota. I looked at him and said, we're good. And he looked at me and said, yeah. I said, this dude is good. He's got a poker face all day. I can't fool with him. But, you know, I, you know, obviously me and Eli has had a lot of conversations as well. But, you know, when you got, you know, when you, you know, when you got alphas like that we do on defense, you expect that. And, again, like I said, Max is trying to become the all-time greatest Raider, and he's got more to go. But it's going to start with leadership and him speaking up because his voice carries a lot of weight. Obviously, his play does everything for us and his energy. But just, just to see that and see our guys really hold each other accountable, I think was really, really, really like critical at a moment for us where we needed it. Antonio, a lot of talk in the offseason was the Raiders need to go get a cornerback. Decorian Bennett, I'm sure, heard all of that. But it seems like he's really responded uh, to that challenge. And what are your thoughts on him uh, through the first two games? Man, like I said, you, you can see it. It was a different look, to be honest, in his eyes when he came back in the spring in April. Like, okay, he's working hard. You see him, and you know, at the time we had Faze on here, and. He was back in the phase on, and he just slowly kept chopping wood. And then we got in the preseason. He, he made that play down in Minnesota on the goal line when he went for it on fourth down. And then just each and every day in practice, even going against Devontae and Jacoby, you could just see the confidence growing. And then I'll be honest, it started again last week against the Chargers. They, they took a shot at him last week or just a couple days ago in Baltimore, did the same thing. And what I love about it, he's not panicking. He's playing the ball. He's trusting his speed. He's trusting his technique. And even better, I'm going to go back to what this bad boy is about with us right now, just how our teammates – celebrate and encourage him, right? That just keeps building confidence up. Because now, listen, he gave up some catches too, but he never flinched. You can't worry about that. No corner in the National Football League never gave up a catch. So I think his ability just to, to respond, play play by play, we talk always not being good, being great, and he's really striving for that. Coach, um, you brought in Tom and Marvin, um, I think at the last year even. And mm -hmm. I'm just kind of curious, have, have there been any cases or examples this year where <clears throat> some of their experience has – kind of bled into you and you've applied that in any of the games so far this year? Um, yeah, I mean, I thought last week, you know, you, you was kind of in the same situation. That game almost played out the exact same way as week one. And Marvin, you know, I went to him about a question about, you know, situational football, third or fourth down, and AP, go with your gut. You know, it's, it's things like that you need. Like, don't worry, last week is last week. How does this game look? 
and play it accordingly. And I think that, that's, that's huge for me because you need that little bit of confidence, right? A lot of times you ask the coach, they'll be like, well, coach, whatever you think, you know? I, mean, I asked you for a reason, like, man, give me some feedback. And that's what I love about both uh, Coughlin and, and Marvin. Obviously, Marvin here every day. My phone calls with Coughlin in the morning. But um, it's just good when you have that, that strong voice and presence where they don't worry about what I think or say. They give me the, the honest answer. Coach, do you plan on leaning on uh, Marvin Lewis a little bit more this week considering his past with Andy Alden? Um, no, because that, that was some years ago. I think what we could do is really get into the mindset, the psyche of the quarterback. I mean, he's been away from some time. Um, it's really a scout report at this point. You know, we, we're still trying to figure out what Carolina's going to do offensively uh, with Andy, which might be different or may not be different than they did with Bryce. So, you know, the offensive line, you know, made a big, you know, blocking scheme change this offseason as well. I know the offense as a whole made a scheme change, but that's not as easy as people on outside may think. Do you think that's factor at right all into some of the struggle? Um, I mean, there's always a learning curve, but I, I, this is not about learning. This is not mental. This is just technique and fundamentals, right? This is just – and then a little bit of strain. You know, we, we just got to do it well enough. You, we don't have enough runs to even judge our running game off of. It's not even good enough. It's, we're like less than 40 runs. It's, it's not good enough, to be honest. So, you know, we'll, we'll hammer that again this week. And then at some point, like you said, you just got to commit to it, right? If it's this week or next week, whenever it comes, you got to commit to the run and stay with it and trust it. And, again – I don't care what running back you are, who you are. Most of these guys tell you around what they're 15, 20 carry to get going, right? So we got to get we got to get our guy there, right? He hasn't even hit 10 plus carries yet. That's it's hard to get a rhythm when you don't touch the ball. We always talk about the opponent, but how much of it this is about the Raiders and not the team that's coming in? To be honest, every week is about that. Now there might be an individual like last week. I'm talking about Lamar Jackson. We we got to talk about him for some time, but this one is strictly about you know the Raiders and Raider Nation because we're coming home. Um, Obviously, a big victory, emotional victory, but we got. How do we follow that up, man? How do we handle success, right? And I always said, you asked me, a couple of you gentlemen asked me, and you know, what do I want this to look like? I want to be consistent each and every week. I don't want to ride this roller coaster, you know. So I want to come home and I want to see our team be consistent, play at the same level with effort, discipline, you know, the passion that you guys see. And then now we need to play four quarters. We haven't done that yet. You know, we played a half. We played, you know, the fourth quarter. I asked him, hey, can we just do it for four quarters? Let's see what that looked like in front of our home crowd. With that being said, does part of the message today during walkthrough or maybe Monday is that quite possibly last week's Raiders or this week's Panthers, nobody gave the Raiders a shot, nobody's given the Panthers a shot. Keep yeah. that in mind when they take the field this week. Yeah, we all look at the standards each and every week, and there's, there's shockers each and every week. I know last week it was us, right? And we don't want to be on that headline. And then the only thing we can worry about and control is us. And we need to do a better job of being detailed, and that's what we're doing. That's what we're talking about this week is attention to details. We got enough film, 122 snaps on offense, 123 on, on defense, almost 50 on special teams. We got enough film to grade and fix all those little miscues. We're not, we're not reinventing the wheel this week, right? We're, we're running our stuff. And at some point, you got to do the little things right more than the other team. The offensive line, it seemed like the first three halves, there were some communication breakdowns that might have led to some of the protection issues. It seemed like they got that figured out in the second half in Baltimore. Is that something that you worked with them that they talked about at halftime, or what did you see in that area? Um, it, that was a problem. Communication was a big, major problem, and then we made another change. So we made a change of guard as well, and that kind of helped us with the communication. Antonio, how, how deep was your exhale when you saw Max down <coughs> on the second to last snap, and then he was able to get up, and then how is his ankle today? Yeah, I mean, we're all battered and bruised. <laughs> that was a physical game. Um, but knowing Max, and you saw what he went through last year, I mean, I don't put nothing past him. Um, we'll slow it down today and see how the week goes. Coach, um, since you played the position, um, I was kind of curious your thoughts about Diablo and his just pure weight and size over the course of 17 games. Um, do you think size-wise he'll be able to just the entire season at that size. It's 2.30. He's a big boy now. He's 2.30. So he's – it ain't size. It's just, you know, with Diablo just being consistent. Pad level, football position. We talked about it just being consistent in that. When you're a taller linebacker, you tend to always stand up because you want to see over everybody. And you got to drop – you got to bend your knees, man. You got to strike. And we've talked about that. He's got to bring his feet on tackles. All the things that we discuss um, each and every week, and I'm sure you guys see on film. But I think – with Diablo, I'm not worried about the weight. It's just really more mentally and just doing it consistently and being that guy because there's so much good that he puts on film. It's just the negatives are, you know, they're a little glaring at times because they're in open field and space. Let's do two more up front here and then Q. 
Rob Spillane had the big turnover on Sunday. Uh, I know you've got a lot of things going through your mind on a game day on the sideline, but how fun is that just to see him fly around and make plays and pick up where he left off last year? Yeah, because I go back to when we, you know, we signed him. The one negative was that he was horrible in pass coverage. And I think that's now his fourth interception for the Raiders, right? So he's done a, a hell of a job, man. First and foremost, just a leader, a bell cow for our team, blue collar. Whatever we get from Max, we get it at the second level from Spillane. And he's just one of those guys, man. He plays every snap, you know, balls to the wall. I mean, he's flying around. He's physical. He's throwing up on the sideline. His face is all red. I'm like, God damn, like, he's an old school, true linebacker. And you love it. It's just, it's good to watch a good linebacker play. And uh, obviously, I'm glad he's on our team. Through two games, only five penalties have been accepted against you. How, how proud are you that your team is able to play as physical as they are and disciplined? Yeah, you know, I think that's, you know, credit, you know, to our staff, to our players buying in, just going to our individual periods, taking in. We talked about that with Baltimore. They were a highly penalized team. We didn't want to be that team. We couldn't beat ourselves. I think, you know, just even from the week before, you know, having composure at the end of the game, right? There was a little chippiness out there as well. And just not being that team, not beating ourselves. And I, I tell them, like, we, if we stop the turnovers, the penalties, and we get off to a fast start, what does this team really look like? Hopefully we see it this weekend. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.